Hello fellow birders, my name is Dennis Cania. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at the spotted thrushes. On the DuPage Birding Club Education Channel, we'll be exploring all things bird related. As I mentioned, today we'll be taking a look at spotted thrushes. So first of all, we have to decide that we're looking at a thrush. We have three similarly looking birds here. They have some characteristics that are common to all of them. We have these brownish backs on all three birds here. We also have some streaking or spotting going on, dark streaking or spotting on a very pale breast. So all of those birds here have that, that same uh, set of features. But we want to take a little closer look and decide that we are actually looking at a thrush. And one of the things that we'd want to focus on is this bill shape. So if you're familiar with what the bill of a robin looks like, this bill shape is going to be very similar to that because those are all thrushes. Uh, if we take a look at this bird over here, you can see that the bill is quite pointed. It's a, a warbler type bill. This is actually an oven bird. It does share some characteristics that we saw on that thrush. It does have this big bold eye ring going around a large eye. And that's characteristic of these woodland type birds. So again, a very big dark eye. But it does have a head pattern over here that's quite different than any of the thrushes that we'll be talking about. It does have this kind of pink salmon -y median crown stripe running through the crown as well as these dark bordering lateral crown stripes that are dark, dark, dark brown. So this would be easily told uh, or separated from the, um, from the wood thrush or any of the other thrushes. The third bird that I have on this screen is a brown thrasher and it does have those, you know, some similar characteristics. However, the bill is quite different, it's a much longer bill. Uh, you can see that it's lacking any kind of an eye ring. It does have a very pale eye, which is actually yellow. It does have some wing bars. And on a rare occasion, you might come across some of our thrushes that will show a very, very faint wing bar, depending on how fresh the plumage is, but it's not something to be expected. It's certainly not something to be looking for. You can see this bird also has a very, very long tail, which is uh, quite different than any of our thrushes. And another bird that I might have put up here that I just, it just occurred to me would be a fox sparrow. It has some very, very similar characteristics as well, as far as being rusty brown on the back quite often and having a very clean whitish breast with, with dark spots on it. Um, if we were to look at that bird, we'd see obviously it has a sparrow type bill and it's actually a bicolored bill as well. So we'd be able to easily separate that bird out as well. So here are our thrushes. We have five of them that uh, we're going to consider. We have great sheep, Swainson's, wood thrush, chest, uh, hermit thrush, and beery. And so all of these thrushes do have some very common characteristics. They're you know, more or less brownish on the back on all of these. Many of them will have some kind of an eye ring going on, some not as noticeable as others, but they do have eye rings. And they all have this spotting on the breast at least in some form. So there are a lot of similar characteristics and it's gonna require us taking a little closer look in order to separate these out. So here's a graph that shows uh, data collected at Fermilab over the last 33 years and it indicates the windows of opportunity for seeing these birds. And you can see that most of our thrushes are gonna show up around the first week of May. Some of them may be leaking over into the last week of April but Veery, Great Cheek, Swainsons, and Wood Thrush are all showing up in that time frame. Whereas Hermit Thrush is going to come in easily a month earlier. We see them actually in the last week of March and all through April. And by the time we're getting through the, la the first week of May, they're all disappearing. So it's quite difficult to uh, um, uh, expect you know, to see Hermit Thrushes well into May, but it, does, it can occur, I suppose. One thing that you can try for in that first week in May is trying to hit and get a grand slam here, so to speak, and get all five of the wood uh, thrushes all in one day. And I've been able to do that. It's not something that you can do very frequently, but it, it does happen. If we look on the other migration uh, in the fall, you can see that the, the, most of the thrushes are showing up in September with the uh, hermit thrush coming in again later. And so it will linger all the way into November and actually into December. And we do have that bird appearing on Christmas counts. The only breeding bird that we have uh, that regularly breeds in the county would be wood thrush. And we can see that there are records going through here. And on rare occasions, we'll have Veery also nesting in the county. However, uh, we don't have those records for Fermilab, but there are sites that have on occasion had Veery's nesting.
but not to be expected. So let's start easy. Let's start with the wood thrush. I think that's the most well-defined bird out of the bunch. You can see it has a very strong white eye ring and it has a lot of streaking, black streaks in the face, in the uh, ear coverts. And you can see that clearly here. And again, the big white gold eye ring. So those two characteristics right off the bat start leaning us towards wood thrush. You can see that the nape and the crown are a very rufousy orange color, uh, more so than the uh, maybe warm colors of the back. And you can see some contrast there. None of the other thrushes are going to have that warm of a crown contrasting with the back. So that's another key thing to look for. Wood thrush also has a very whitish breast with very, very dark, well-defined spots on it. And you can, see, you can see that here, very heavy spotting. And that spotting will continue all the way down into the uh, lower belly region. You can see it here in the flanks and coming down the belly. So all the way down to the bottom of the bird, we're gonna have spotting on wood thrushes. And that's a unique characteristic for this thrush. If we move on to the opposite end of the spectrum, we have a viri. It's going to, again, be very warm brown on the back, uh, but that brown color is consistent between the crown, nape, and back. It's all the same. We see that it's a very nondescript face, and there's hardly any kind of an eye ring going on here. It's an incomplete eye ring. It's grayish and hardly noticeable in the field. The lower is um, going to be grayish or brown here, and it's not going to be uh, something that shows up very well. You can see that the spotting, if it exists at all, is in the, just the upper breast. You can see here better on this bird. You can see that it's very diffused spotting. It's uh, more of a lighter brown in color. It's nowhere near as bold and conspicuous as what we just saw in that wood thrush. And you can see that it, it, it um, goes away very quickly. It's just, it's just confined to the upper, upper breast. And once we get down here, you see absolutely no spotting at all. So that's our very. And now we're gonna talk about the early bird, the hermit thrush. And so it's going to have a brownish back. So it's not th that much unlike what we've been seeing on those other two thrushes. It's a little browner instead of rufousy. Uh, it does have an eye ring. It's a complete white eye ring, but it's not as bold as what we expect to see on that wood thrush. And we don't have all those black streaks in the ear coverts. Here you can see quite clearly, there are really no streaks going on here. And you can see the eye ring. You can see that it does have bold spotting on the breast, but it's confined to the upper breast. And once you get away from the upper breast, they quickly fade out and we have nothing going on here in the belly. A key thing to look for on hermit thrush is to see just how rufousy the tail and rump are. And when we compare that color to the back color, we'll see that there is a contrast there. So even on hermit thrushes that might be a little redder than this one is, you're still going to see some kind of contrast between that back and this rufousy tail and rump. One of the things that hermit thrushes like to do is to pump their tail. And what they do, it's kind of a unique pumping. They'll raise their tail very slowly and then all of a sudden drop it and then continue to raise it up again and drop it. And all the thrushes potentially could be um, pumping their tail, but none of them do it as frequently as the hermit thrush, and it's kind of a unique way in which it does pump that tail. So now we're gonna move on to the buffy thrush. And again, we're talking about a thrush that's you know kind of brownish on the back, so no, no big surprise there. Uh, but it does have a very buffy face. The eye ring is very conspicuous and it's very buffy. And if we look at the lore, we see that it as well is very, very buffy. And you can see that represented here in this close-up. Very, very buffy eye ring, very, very buffy lore. This bird isn't showing a lot of buff coming down the side of the face, whereas this one is. And so you could see buffiness uh, all throughout this, this area on Swainson's thrushes, thrushes, but that's not the big key here. It's mainly the fact that it has a buffy eye ring and buffy lore. It does have strong spotting in the upper breast, but again, it fades away as we get down into the, sorry about that, as we get down into the uh, lower breast, we, we lose all of that spotting. Now we can move to the next one. Great cheek thrush is our last thrush, and you can see that it's a brown, but it's kind of a grayish brown. In poor lighting, it might be able, it might be difficult to discern just what color brown we're looking at, but the facial pattern is uh, quite apparent here, a lack thereof. We don't have any kind of streaking, black streaking going on. We do have somewhat of an eye ring. It's a gray eye ring, 
It's very, very indistinct and in the field hardly ever noticed uh, unless you have a really, really good look at it. So uh, we're looking at a, a bird that has a very, very plain face. Uh, we have uh, the same spotting on the breast that we saw on that Swainson thrush. And again, it, it fades out as it gets lower and lower here. It's totally lacking the buff in this area, uh, a gray lower, uh, gray eye ring. You might find some um, gray cheek thrushes that will show some buff in this area here below the ear coverts and coming down uh, along the side of the throat, um, but that uh, isn't gonna seal the deal. You wanna see that buff in the eye ring and in the lore to make the Swainson's thrush. So this is gray cheeked. So I've developed a chart here that gives you some of the key indicators that you should be looking at when you're looking at a thrush. And rather than try and memorize all this, we'll give you the opportunity to print this off. And the way you can achieve that is to, at this point in time now, hit your print screen button on your computer. And you can then save that image off to a Word document or something and print it at your leisure. If you fail to do it now, you can always go back to this uh, segment and, and review it later. So thanks for taking the time to view this video. Hopefully we've given you some bird food for thought. And I hope you'll join us again in the future as we explore all things bird related.